Welcome back to Travel and Lit. Today we are going to Sherlock Holmes Museum. Let's go. It was a lovely Saturday morning. I took one one three, the double decker bus, to the Baker Street. I was shocked by the queue. It was nine twenty in the morning, and there is a queue to buy the ticket. Good job, Sherlock. Finally, I get my ticket. You can choose the language of your ticket. I choose English one. As you can see here on the ticket, there are the introduction of the museum. After buying the ticket, there is another queue waiting for you. This queue is waiting for going into the museum, because the museum is too small. So they let fifteen people go into at the same time. While waiting, you can take pictures with the guard. Now it's my turn to go into the museum. Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to two two one B Baker Street, home of the world's most famous detective Sherlock Holmes and his dear friend Doctor Watson. I must ask you don't touch the items on display, but you can take photographs here. Here on the first floor, the room to my right is Sherlock's bedroom. Within it, you'll find parts of his many disguises, including his makeup set and a whole host of real-life serial killers on his wall too. The room here is the study, the heart of 221B. We have Dr. Watson's desk here with his medical kit bag, the Times newspaper from 1881, which was the year the pair moved to the address. In the far corner is Sherlock's desk with his chemistry set for crime scene analysis, and of course his famous Stradivarius violin, which he would play to ease his mind through the most troublesome of cases. On the back wall are two letters V R. They stand for Victoria Regina. Queen Victoria was the reigning monarch of the era, and without a case to occupy his mind, Holmes would turn to pistol practice in the living room, much to poor Mrs. Hudson's distress. On the mantelpiece here, a bust of Queen Victoria. To the left, a photograph of a lady. Now, this is the famous Irene Adler, one of the few to ever outsmart the great detective. For that reason, he would always hold a picture of her. In the two chairs here, Sherlock liked to sit in this one with his back to the window. So, in the daytime, his own face would be cast in the shadow, but the daylight would fall on his guests here, so he could study them, their clothes, their facial expressions, giving him the upper hand. So thank you very much for listening to me about some of the items here on the first floor. Any questions, please do ask. The first floor, living room, and Sherlock's bedroom. I ask the guide if I can put the record on my YouTube video, and he said yes. So I put it here. This is the map of Victorian age. Then. To the second floor, Doctor Watson's room and Mrs. Hudson's room. I think everyone must know a little bit about Sherlock Holmes. For me, I knew Sherlock because of the cartoon Detective Conan. When I was a little girl, I loved Conan very much. I knew that the story of Conan was based on the Sherlock until the middle school. But I didn't read the series of book. Instead, I watched the Sherlock, the BBC ver version acted by Benedict Cumberbatch. Then I fell in love with this brilliant detective. Then the top floor wax museum of the important scenes, which you can see the brief introduction on your ticket. The brief introduction of Sherlock Holmes in English literature. Author. Sir Conan Doyle. He was a doctor in real life. The story took place in 221B Baker Street, which was not a real address at the time. And the story started in the Victorian era, which is from 1837 to 1901. By the way, Victorian era is also the beginning of the modern. This was my trip to visit the world-famous consulting detective Sherlock Holmes Museum. I hope you enjoy the video as I enjoy the museum. Don't forget to subscribe Travel and Lead if you haven't. See you soon in my next video.